Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey guys, Jake Ludington here, and in a previous video I showed you how I rooted this Nook Color to have a full-fledged Android experience. This time around I'm going to show you how you can install Cyanogen Mod, which gives you Android 2.3.3 and a whole slew of features that are not included in the version of Android that comes with the Nook Color. So let's get on with it. If you followed my previous install on how to root the Nook using manual neuter, then this is going to look pretty familiar. This is the Clockwork Mod recovery module that allows you to install various packages. In this case, I'm going to be installing Cyanogen Mod version 7, Google Apps, uh, which includes things like the Android Marketplace and YouTube, and then the Dahlgren kernel, which allows you to overclock the processor inside your Nook Color. Now, that last one is optional, but uh, the processor tops out at 800 megahertz. You can overclock, um, according to the Cyanogen mod interface, up to 1300 megahertz or 1 1.3 gigahertz. Um, I'm in my testing. I decided I was going to limit it to 1.2 because um, I was noticing some instability, and it does mess a little bit with the voltage. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, clean up some of the storage that is on your Nook color. And I'm, so I'm gonna go to mounts and storage. And if you remember the volume up and down helps you navigate and then you use the home button to select. So the two things that I'm gonna clean off are I'm going to format system. And very similarly, uh, you have to choose the yes option out of several no options. shouldn't take too long for this to complete. If you get to the end of all these various processes and the boot process for Cyanogen mod gets hung up, don't panic. Uh, that's fairly, uh, fairly common uh, that it doesn't always work as it should right out of the box. Now the next thing, um, after format WAC system, we're gonna do format WAC cache. This one may take a little less time. And then after you've done the formatting, um, you can hit the power button to go back up a level. And then you're gonna install zip from SD card. Now the order of these is important so that you get uh, everything that you need there. You're gonna choose the zip from the SD card. And um, I still have the manual neuter on here uh, the G apps dash GB with the date are the Google apps. There's the update dash CM dash 7.0.3 dash Encore dash signed. That's the one that I'm going to install uh, that is the actual sign engine mod. Now I've run through this a couple times to make sure it works. Uh, this particular install does take a little bit of time, so anticipate. Um, anywhere from 60 seconds to a couple minutes depending on how long it, it takes on your particular nook uh, but if it seems like it's taking longer than you think it should uh, don't panic so we'll just wait for it to complete here um, it's got to go through and install all the components basically what this is doing as opposed to what you did with manual neuter is it's giving you a whole completely different Android tablet experience. This is the full um, gingerbread 2.3.3 Android experience. When you're in that Cyanogen mod interface, you will not be able to access any of the Barnes and Noble eBooks. So uh, that's something I guess I should caution you before you proceed this far into the process. But for for me, that wasn't important. Um, I get all my ebooks through the Amazon Kindle store and I really want this to be a tablet not an ebook reader anyway uh, thus far I have not actually opened an Amazon Kindle book on it I still like reading on the uh, Kindle devices with e-ink far better but as a tablet uh, even in just using the manual neuter install really liked this um, I spent a little time with Cyanogen mod I'm, I'm doing another install to test it again and record this video but 
um, I'm, I'm ready to make the switch to Cyanogen mod and leave it that way permanently. All right, so it looks like that completed just fine. Then the next thing we're going to need to do is choose another zip from SD card. This time we're going to install the Google Apps. Uh, this one should install very quickly. Same drill. Select the yes from a bunch of no's. And it'll let you know once it's complete. And then if you want to do the overclocking, um, the, the uh, update dash CM7 Dahlengren is the uh, final app that you will need to install before you reboot and make sure all of this is working. And that kernel basically overwrites the kernel that was part of the ROM package that comes with CyanogenMod. Um, Dahlengren is uh, a very active community member in the Android community who built an overclocked kernel for the Nook Color. So there you have it. Those are the three steps you, you need to take in order to be ready to boot up into CyanogenMod. I'm going to remove the oh, hitting buttons there. Can remove the micro SD card and hit the power button to go back. For some reason, it's not letting me go back. Oh, it's All right, we're ready to reboot the system now. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the orientation. You're still going to see that same read forever that you see every time you boot up your Nook color. You can see Android with a little flashing cursor. That's a good sign because that's not what shows up when you have manual neuter installed. And there we go, there's the Cyanogen Mod interface starting to load. It's a good sign. One of the times that I tested this, I got to the point of booting. I saw that Android with the flashing cursor, and then it was showing me the Nook color screen that was the boot screen from Manual Neuter. If you see that, reboot and try again. Um, I have read all over the internet that it is very frequent that the first time you boot, uh, the thing doesn't boot quite right. I'm not sure why that is, but I guess that's the risk that you take with anything that you hack. And there you have the Cyanogen Mod uh, default home screen. Now, one of the things that you can tell uh, that is instantly different about this is when I open the settings. There's a set of signage and mod settings. I'm going to tilt this a little bit towards the screen so hopefully it's easier to see. And if you go to performance, there's a, oh, oh they, they give you a warning. But if you click on CPU settings, and uh, you can see here that the minimum CPU frequency and the max CPU frequency. Uh, are are settable or configurable there. Um, technically, you could set the minimum CPU frequency up to the maximum. That's not really that advisable because uh, the ARM processors are designed to look at how your device is functioning and throttle the CPU up and down, which uh, in part helps with the battery life and can also help with uh, maintaining the overall life of your device. So I would stick with leaving the minimum where it is and only increase the maximum because it's only going to bump up the maximum when it needs it. Uh, like, for instance, if you run any video on the device, you're going to probably get a lot better playback if you set a maximum CPU frequency higher. Um, in this case, I set it to the 1200 megahertz. And 
you can try out the 1300. I found it to be a little bit unstable. So I'm sticking with 1200, which seems to work just fine. 800 is the default maximum of the Nook color if you want to remain very conservative about how you use it. So uh, it looks like this, I'm, this must have saved my settings from the last time that I ran through this because otherwise I would have been asked to uh, configure my Google account. And in this case, I wasn't, I didn't clean, I did not delete all the data off the device um, when I did this latest install, uh, which saves you a lot of time because um, it should even remember like Wi-Fi settings. See, I should be able to pull up, uh, Google pulls up and, and you didn't see me configure Wi-Fi. One of the first things that you'll want to do when you turn the device on after you uh, install CyanogenMod for the first time is configure the Wi-Fi settings because even if you did the manual neuter configuration, uh, it very likely will not be able to transfer over the Wi-Fi settings and you'll be uh, stuck unable to configure your Google account without the Wi-Fi turned on. So there you have it. Signage Mod was a very easy upgrade and hopefully this helps you out in completing the process. And again, um, there'll be a link in the description for the YouTube video over to a article on Locker Gnome that will include all the things that you need to download and any of the gotchas that you'll find as you go through the process.